بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا In this session we will talk about سورة الانشقاق It's a Meccan surah by consensus. There's no uh, disagreement about this surah being a Meccan surah. And uh, the name of the surah is al inshiqaq according to the massive majority of the books of Tafsir. It was uh, revealed after Surah al Infitar and before uh, Surah al Rum. Uh, as per the reason of revelation, uh, there is no particular reason uh, given by any of the tafasir for this surah or for the revelation of this surah. Uh, this surah, uh, being a Meccan surah, addresses the, the issue of the hereafter. And the issue of the hereafter and the events of the uh, hereafter and the introductions to the hereafter uh, were discussed in previous surahs we've uh, addressed with different details uh, differing from one surah to the other. But this particular surah has a distinct feature about the way it uh, addresses the introduction to the hereafter. Uh, Allah Azza wa says, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ انشقت وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ When the sky has split open and has listened and responded to its Lord and was obligated to do so. The splitting of the sky, according to Ibn al-Jawzi, is one of the major signs, major introductory signs to the hereafter. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, when, Ida here is translated as when. So we're not talking about if. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, we are not talking about if, it is when. So it is something that will certainly take place, but it is only a matter of time when Allah Azza wa Jal decrees for that uh, to happen. And the scholars said the asama, the sky here, does not only uh, refer to the sky above us. It talks about everything that is of, above us, all the heavens, all the skies uh, above us. And when it splits open, it does not split open in a systematic manner. It rather ruptures. Uh, and it's torn into pieces. And this is just an indication that reflects the magnitude of uh, terror that, will people, that people will feel uh, when, this, when this event takes place. وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ And it listened and responded. The, Allah Azza wa Jal will give the command and the uh, skies will listen and immediately be inclined to immediately comply with the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. in, in uh, as an Arabic word, comes from two different roots. From adhin means to give permission, or udun, meaning the hearing tool, right? The, the ear. Uh, and they both apply here. It listened to the command attentively, and the command itself is the permission for it to split. So the heavens listen attentively and submits. وَحُقَّتْ And it was obligated to do so. Uh, see, the, the skies are not like uh, human beings and jinn. They don't have a will. They don't have a choice. They were created obedient. 
unlike mankind has the choice to obey or disobey. Jinn has the choice to, do, to obey or disobey. But the heavens, they have no choice but to comply and obey. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ And when the earth has been extended, Ibn Abbas said it will be extended like leather is extended. It will expand and stretch until it becomes large enough to accommodate all people that will be resurrected on that day. وَأَلْقَتْ مَا فِيهَا وَتَخَلَّتْ And it has cast out that within it and relinquished it. Okay, so the earth will spit out everything that is within it. Now, what is within it is not only talking about dead people. Though the number of dead people from the time Adam was created, alayhi salatu wasalam, until the day of judgment is something that is massive and beyond imagination, but we're st still talking about the treasures of the earth, minerals and metals. Uh, water, things that we don't know about, all the secrets that are hidden under, will, all of that will be extracted, all of that will be spit out by uh, the earth. وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ Again, the same verse is used for the earth. And it has listened and responded to its Lord and was obligated to do so. Just like the heavens responded, with obedience, with immediate uh, obedience, without hesitation, the earth will do so. Notice these verses are talking about the heavens and the earth as if they are human beings. They receive commands, they listen, and they respond to the command by submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal spoke or described the heavens and, and the earth as uh, obedient in what appears to be a, a, like a dialogue, if you may. Allah Azza wa Jal, after having created the heavens and the earth, He said, Come to my obedience willingly or by compulsion. They both said, they both responded, we come submitting with obedience. Now this is the distinct feature about this surah. This environment of submission Willing submission of the heavens and the earth to the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look how, though it is a terrifying moment, it is described in a very calm manner. Submission envelops this uh, description or the scene of the splitting of the, of the skies and the uh, opening of the earth and it spitting out what's in it. Then Allah Azza wa Jal addresses his speech to human beings. Ya ayyuhal insanu, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadihan famulaqi. O mankind, indeed, you are struggling toward your Lord with great exertion and will meet it. Struggling. Kadihun. The word kadih reflects all kinds of striving, struggling, effort. Mankind will go through in the course of life. It simply describes the nature of life. Allah Azza wa Jal, after having spoken about the heavens and the earth and how submissive they 
respond to Allah Azza wa Jal, how fast they respond to Allah Azza wa Jal and His command. Allah is addressing the human being. Ya ayyuhal insanu, O you, O you mankind who was created with this rank, with this lofty rank, you are a human being to whose service these creations were submit or, or for whose service these creation were created. They are submission, they are submitting to Allah Azza wa Jal with submissiveness. You are worthier to be submissive to the one who created you better than them. Loftier than them, than them submitting to Allah Azza wa Jal immediately. See, Allah Azza wa Jal created us with, uh, with the nature of being slaves, with this servitude being the objective. And the more one preserves this nature, the closer he will be to these creations Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in these uh, previous verses. See, mankind by nature are inclined to uh, laziness, delaying things, uh, slow in response, right? Because they want to make it in, a, in an easy manner. They want to be relaxed. Uh, they will do the minimum they can get away with. Like, uh, okay, you can pray sunnah. It's not an obligation. It's not one of the pillars to pray sunnah standing up. You see a lot of people praying sunnah sitting down for no reason. Other than it being easier. Other than it being faster. Uh, you see a lot of people, wealthy, healthy, have the time. But they don't go to hajj. I will do it next year. I will do it. Inshallah, when I get married, I'll take my wife. Or, or my dad wants to go to Hajj, inshallah, three years from now. And they keep putting it off and delaying it and delaying it. Because that's just the nature of mankind. They like to delay. They like to make it an easy life, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling mankind that this life is going to be a struggle. Whether this mankind is a believer or a disbeliever, he is going to struggle. The type of, of struggle is going to differ from one person to the other. But it is still going to be a struggle. Right? But eventually, you will die. فَمُلَاقِيهِ You will die and then meet your Lord. Or meet your record of deeds and see what you've sent forth. So there is no time to delay, there is no space for laziness. So you need to work uh, fast. So Allah is telling mankind, you will not find rest in this life. You will not feel relaxed on earth. The only relaxation, the only rest, as the famous statement, لا راحة للمؤمن إلا بلقائي. Rabbi, there will be no rest for the believer until the moment he meets Allah Azza wa meaning until death approaches him. Uh, see, every surah or in general, in every surah you will find one verse that is uh, like the core, a very essential verse. Uh, in the surah, like for example, uh, the the chapter of Al Baqarah, the most essential verse in it is Ayatul Kursi, right? Uh, in Surah Al Fatiha, uh, it is the verse Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in, about which Ibn Al Qayyim authored a huge uh, book, right? only talking about إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ In this surah, this verse, يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانُ إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدَحًا فَمُلَاقِي is the most essential uh, of all the verses uh, in this surah. Uh, 
after this uh, summarized yet distinct description of the events, the introductory events to the uh, day of judgment and the day of resurrection, Allah <laughs> starts talking about the consequence of this struggle mentioned in the verse we just uh, spoke about. Ya inna ila rabbika Then you will meet him, either your Lord or your book of deeds. Allah Azza wa Jal here uh, in the following verses addresses the consequence. And uh, as it is uh, the case in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the two types of people uh, at the day of judgment. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا Then as for he who is given his record in his right hand, he will be judged with an easy account and return to his people in happiness. This is one class of people, one category of people, those who receive their books with the right hand as a way of honoring them because the right hand is or signifies honor. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, as in the narration of Aisha, Kana وسلم, the Prophet ﷺ used to love using his right hand in all good things. So given the book of uh, or the record of deeds with the right hand is a way of honoring the person and honoring that book of deeds. Now, فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا He will be judged with an easy account. Uh, Aisha رضي الله عنها and this is reported by Muslim when she heard the Prophet وسلم, saying, if anyone is uh, thoroughly examined in reckoning, he will be punished. She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, didn't Allah Azza wa Jal say, فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا He will be judged with an easy account. He said, this is not the uh, reckoning or examination in reckoning. He said this is simply presenting his deeds. But whoever is thoroughly examined in reckoning will be punished. In another narration, he وسلم, said, Allah will look at his record of deeds and then forgive him immediately. So it is not actually holding a person to account and auditing him, if you may, right? It is just presenting the book of deeds or the record of deeds. And then if, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَىٰ And to Allah belongs the highest of examples. It's like a professor who knows that this is an A student throughout the semester, right? And he just looks through his, his uh, multiple choice uh, test and he goes, okay, he passed. And he gives him an A, right? Allah Azza wa Jal, for those who receive their book, their record of deeds with the right hands, will just simply look at it and uh, admit them into Jannah. We ask Allah to make us amongst them. وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا And return to his people in happiness. أَهْلِهِ can, people, can mean family and can mean people of piety who are like him. So people who are pious will be gathered together. All of them will be gathered together. And it can mean one's family with whom he will be joined. Uh, in Jannah, those who were like him upon faith, upon righteous deeds, will all be gathered together 
uh, in Jannah. Then Allah Azza wa Jal moves to describe the situation of the opposite category of people. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ But as for he who is given his record behind his back. Now, we're always used to hearing right hand and left hand. But in this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal says, behind his back. Well, this is a way of further humility to that person. So he will be given his record of deed in his left hand, but behind his back. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, he will try to extend his right hand to take his record of deeds. But an angel will, would grab it and then dislocate his right arm and then he is given his, uh, his book of uh, deeds or record of deeds in his left hand uh, behind his back. Ibn Kathir said his arm will be twisted behind his back. Imagine this humility. It's, have you ever seen someone being arrested? We ask Allah Azza wa to protect us all, right? They, they, what they do is they twist their arms or their hands behind their back, right? To control them and, and, uh, and manage them, right? And then put the handcuffs on them, right? Well, the difference is that it's not going to be a police officer then. It's going to be an angel who's aggressive, whose task is to punish whose task is to humiliate those who are deserving of humility. Now, what happens when this person is, or when, when this person receives his book of, of deeds or record of deeds behind his back in his left hand? فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُوْ ثُبُورًا He will cry out for destruction. This poor person, this miserable person, struggled throughout his life. Though he enjoyed and satisfied his whims and desires, right? But he had to struggle in order to fulfill them and satisfy them. It's not easy, right? He struggled and then at the end, after spending the entire life or most of his life in disobedience or disbelief for that matter, he faces this uh, humiliating, painful, terrifying fate. And he realizes that what is awaiting him, what is ahead of him, is more terrifying and more painful. When he sees all of that, he supplicates against his own self with destruction. He wishes that he will be ruined so that he doesn't face the remaining part of punishment that is awaiting him. After this psychological pain, Allah says, and enter to burn in a blaze. This is why he calls for destruction because of the fear of that blaze that is awaiting to burn him. <inaudible> Indeed, he had once been among his people or family again in happiness. He was heedless. He led a heedless life he did what he wished. He was away from Allah. He was not responsive. He was not attentive to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he was not submissive to the orders of Allah. He did not fulfill his obligations, nor did he refrain from what he was prohibited from doing. He simply did what he wanted. He simply lived his life the way he wished. إِنَّهُ ظَنَّ أَلَّا يَحُورُ 
Indeed, he had thought he would never return to Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. This verse reminds, uh, reminds the person with the, his, his past life, with the reason of his misery and punishment, that he did not think whilst living in this life that he is returning to Allah. And we mentioned before that some of the believers resemble the disbelievers by their action. How? They act as if they're not going to return to Allah. Just like the believers, the disbelievers verbally say that, some of the believers practically do that. They act as if they're not returning to Allah. They act as if Allah is not, Azza wa Jal is not going to hold them to account. إِنَّهُ ظَلَّ he thought that he will never return to Allah Azza wa Jal. Bala inna rabbahu kana bihi basira. But yes, indeed, his Lord was ever of him seeing. Meaning, indeed, they will return to Allah Azza wa Jal, though they thought they will never do. And the fact is that Allah Azza wa Jal is all seeing, all hearing, all knowing. They are monitored. All their moves, all their words, all their actions are recorded. And all of that is under the control of Allah Azza wa Jal. And all of that is a fact. And another fact added to that is that of resurrection and accountability. Allah Azza wa Jal did not create mankind for no reason and no objection. And He therefore will not leave them unaccounted for their deeds and actions.